so capturing other ships may be a thing. It might be uh, uh, Kickstarter, actually, will be the way to go. Um, August 22nd, we hit Kickstarter, and there's going to be a lot of really cool reward tiers, uh, special stuff you can get. So um, Now, there's we're still working on this part of it, but there, you're going to have these docks around the world. So, like, for instance, if one here, you can't see anything, but you go here, you come out, you talk to Blackjack, he, lets you, he takes you on land. So here, in this place, you know, we've got the ice type of world. So, there'll be all kinds of different... <laughs> yeah, I mean, $200 you, is a, is a, would be a high reward tier. I mean, like, there's a lot of stuff. You'd get an uh, alpha build of it every time we release one and be in the dev forums and all this other stuff. As you can see, this level here is incomplete. It's completely broken. So. Oh, I didn't know you could swim under it. That's more yeah, complete that than I thought. We were trying to go for like a floating thing. Um, no, I mean, yeah, I, I appreciate what you're saying here, guy, but it, it would be better just to, you know, if we could kind of consolidate it all to the, to the Kickstarter. Hopefully that's the idea. We can get some mobility there. And, uh, if you if you want to send the uh, the Lasso Games Twitch a message, and uh, we will absolutely remind you as soon as the Kickstarter is, is live, and you can you can look at our um, you can look at our packages then and see what you're thinking of. Because we haven't quite we haven't quite fleshed out like what packages we want at what price points. We have lots of ideas for um for what we want to offer at different reward tiers, but we haven't quite got the we haven't quite got the pricing where we want it, so it's just, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more balancing in that like, in, in that regard. But if you if you send the Lasso Games uh, Twitch channel a, a message, we'll we'll absolutely send you a reminder. Yeah, and follow us too. I mean follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I mean all the links are down there. You can stay abreast of the updates. I mean we're gonna try to keep issuing updates until the Kickstarter launches and I'll be host I'll be updating the dev blog and everything until I mean until the game releases. So I mean that all the release date is gonna depend on how successful the Kickstarter is. Um but you know it's probably gonna be a year or so. Um, <laughs> no, I mean trust me, I do want your money. Uh, and, and we'll probably set up something on our site here soon to uh, accept donations after the Kickstarter runs its course. But, um, you know, we, we, we want to, I don't want to turn anybody away, but, you know, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, you, you can understand, like, why right now we're really focusing on Kickstarter, because it's, Kickstarter is an all-or-nothing type deal. Yeah, and we want to get as many people to, to give their money to Kickstarter as possible, because the more money we get there, the closer we get to actually getting all that Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it creates a snowball effect, you know, I mean, like, you, oh, is that, is that you, Code Monkey? Is that your game? It reminds me of a era online. I don't know if you ever played that. It was an old mod for Grawl. It was like, I don't know if you ever did that. That's that's really cool looking though, man. I like it. Yeah, man. Oh that's, what are you building it in? If you may, if I may ask. Oh, sorry. I forgot about the delay. Yeah, is there a way to tweak the delay that Twitch uh, implements? I think um, Gary's gone. He's our Twitch probably master. Probably not. I mean, I think it's pretty pretty based around this, around the your performance and stuff. You founded Era? No way, dude. You gotta be kidding me, dude. I played Era online forever, man. We gotta. Uh, we should exchange information after this. I'd like to follow you on Twitter and stuff if you, if you are. I loved Era Online. That was one of my favorite things, dude. Nice, man. Respect. I don't know if you guys are seeing this mini map here. I'm pulling up, but this just gives you kind of an idea of the the scale of the world. I mean, like this part, I'm going to be traveling around. So. Oh, sorry. 
I think that I put a port in here. Yeah, if you didn't notice, we're, we're kind of adhering to the NES color palette and the uh, um, audio chip limitations. So we've composed all this music. to the NES mod chip, so it's, it's to kind of create that retro aesthetic that seems to be so uh, popular right now. Man, I tell you, I don't remember if it was Chris, Z, and Jen's time. I honestly don't remember at all, man, because it, it's been probably at least 10 years ago. At least 10 years ago. So I, I really don't remember who all was playing at that time, but I tell you, I loved it, man. I, I loved golf. Like, my, I put my heart and soul into it, man. It was one of the greatest games. I thought it was going to be, like, the next big thing when I played it. And and it just, I don't know, it never, never really clicked, I guess, like it should have. So, but I loved it, though, man. I really did love it. So yeah, this is the scale of the world here. Not, this in this current in its current form is largely unpopulated, but um, it's going to be populated, and that's going to be one of the Kickstarter tiers actually too. Is well, right now we've got it at a thousand dollars, but you can help. Uh, you know, we can populate. You know, if you do the thousand dollar tier, you get to basically populate one of these whole continents, I mean, including the designing the enemies, and everything, and then of course you get the game and everything up there. But that's definitely the highest tier that we have right now. But um, there's going to be some other things. It looks like my calculations are a little bit off, too. The minimap dot has got me kind of inside the landmass there as I get close to it. So, dude, that is awesome, man. I want to look at that engine. I want to I want to share some of that stuff, uh, if you don't mind, after this. If uh, You have to work. <laughs> I mean, you know, the the levels probably need, need tweaking, so... No, that's... Uh, that's basically what it is. I mean, like you, you know, if you get, if you don't, if you back a thousand dollars, you you basically, you know, you lay yeah, you it don't, out. And, you don't have to code anything if you don't want to. About yeah, you don't you work just, on it. You just you can you can just draw everything on paper and say, put make this in the game, and we'll do all the hard work. <laughs> yep, pretty much it. Wow, this. I mean, we'll tweet. get we'll get say. You can't make a, you know, the yeah, I mean, you can't make whatever, you know a bit. <laughs> dildo shaped enemy or something like that I mean like we want to keep it within the constraints of our fantasy world that we've created here but uh, you know that's just to give you an idea of the, the scale and size of the ship I don't know why my food isn't depleting here Nick I don't know what the deal is it seemed like it was I like it it should be depleting over time nah that's fine I think that we should put I think we should write the date and time and stuff into the devcon though because yeah get it off the inventory screen live time no, no, not an MMO. It's single player, PC, Steam. I mean, this is uh, this is gonna be. I mean, kind of the uh, you know the, the that the old NES experience. I mean, we might look at trying to get some kind of online features or some kind of multiplayer going on as a stretch goal. But as it is right now, I mean, we're gonna be operating really razor lean uh, margins and stuff to get this thing done at the time of frame that we want to get it done anyway. So we. We really don't want to like promise anything that we're not going to be able to deliver on. So, um, in, in terms of a single player experience, we're planning on making it fairly large. So, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, those of you that are just coming in here, I'll pop back in to show the scale of the map again here too. Right now, I don't know. Can you see my uh, cursor? I think I don't know if you can see it or not on the stream. No, wait. no, it doesn't show the mouse cursor. It doesn't show it. No. Okay. Hey, hey, I will add you. Right, yeah, it does show the mouse cursor. So right now, oh, yeah, the bulk of the game has just been in this area right here. Um, this is it. Like this is playable region of the game. So everything that you saw us playing earlier is just a tiny fraction of this. But I mean, all this is going to be at least somewhat fleshed out. So I mean, you're going to have these polar regions up here, and then there's going to be some like volcanic stuff, and then there's a political map online too. There. That you can go to, you can see it on our YouTube channel and a few other places where all this stuff is divided up, so we could be able to create some kind of like 
extra country skirmishes that you can get involved in and possibly change the course of the game that way but but I mean this is the this is the scale that we're shooting for here and I think that we can accomplish it cuz like the framework here is is in place you know it's just a matter of populating everything and, and, and getting it done you know we wanted a kickstarter campaign really to be more of a, of a of a testament of what we've already done than you know some kind of um, list of promises that might be true. We wanted to show people that we've actually put the work in and that, you know, we're going to deliver on some stuff. So, so that was kind of the, the idea there, but, you know, hopefully when, it, when the time comes, you know, there'll be people that really want to make this thing a reality and make it a game that people like to play. And, for me, you know, I'm a retro game guy. I mean, this is what this is the game that I always wanted to play. Like, I loved, you know, Castlevania and, and Castlevania 2, Sid Meier's Pirates, and Metroid, and games like that. Like, I I just really loved those games, you know. And I I wanted I always wanted them to be just a little bit more than what they were, you know. And everybody always asks that: Can you get to the stuff down in the sand? And you can't currently, but maybe a shovel should be one of the main weapons that you can get to, but and I feel like we might be copying way too much off of Shovel Knight, so I don't know. But it, that would be cool if you could get down there to it. It's like you can see the shells, but it would be cool to hide some stuff. You wouldn't even have to make a shovel, I mean, you could make it a sub-weapon, like... Make it a shovel, just call it something else. Large <laughs> spade. Spade. <laughs> make, it a, make it a sand spade. But I mean, you really could make it as a sub-weapon, though, like... Not like a you use it as an attack, but like a you press a circle or whatever, and it just kind of digs one little row down. Well, you, you'd have to make like special diggable sand, you know. But I don't know. It's a nice thought. A lot of people ask about that, so definitely need to be something we need to consider. Um, but yeah, what I was saying before is that you know that it's something. This is the game though that I always want. I always wanted to get the classics that I played on the regular Nintendo and the Super NES. To, I always felt like I wanted them just to be a little bit more than what they were. And I, this is our opportunity, you know, to make the game that we always wanted to play. So. This guy up here at a random interval. Pass out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I noticed that a lot of devs use Skype, but it's like they either use Twitter or they use Skype, or they use a little bit of both, and that's like it. So I'll definitely hit you up on Skype. We've got a couple devs that I've met that are uh, really active on Skype, a couple chip tune composers that kind of help me out with the uh, music and stuff, so I will definitely check that out. I want to record that, actually, so don't forget. But I mean, it would be it would be great if you guys could you know, follow our Twitch. We're doing this every Monday Whoa. night. Um, and, you know, we're trying to show off our new features uh, and add stuff to the game. Kind of going back over some of the other stuff and working on actually working on some development a little bit too. Like this right here, Nick was working on this this morning, and or not this morning, but earlier before the stream started. He got this working really quick, so we'll we'll clean it up a little bit more visually. But this bank function man is great because it's really all just something that we, you know, kind of conceptualized and made it happen today, and, that was hey, just, hey. and that's what this is all about, you know. John, do me a favor real quick and talk to the blacksmith. Talk to the blacksmith, okay. Yeah, when you did it earlier, it looked like there was just a pile of uh, useless iron. Oh yeah, that computer. was me. The menu mod thing that changes the, uh, not we. Hey, I need to find a way to put a text overlay on the screen that shows what kind of vape juice I'm using. <laughs> Devin Styers. <laughs> that, that reminds there's a uh, there's a Hearthstone streamer named Forson that um, he always uh, he does the exact same thing with the, the type of uh, snooze that he's using on any given day. Oh really? Yeah. Dude, I bet you there's a way I can do it. Anybody use OBS? If you do, 
tell me how I can put a text overlay on the screen because that would be awesome. I'll just do it before I start vaping just so you can see what it is. So what was it that you did that uh, caused all the iron to show up oh, on the screen? Oh, the menu mod thing for the uh, for Jonathan when he turns the um, when he turns the text gray when you fix the ship. Came back later, a week later. Smoking uh, bong. I'll be smoking it every week. It's not a bong though. Disclaimer. Pole with the sign on top. Oh, I don't know, Gary. Maybe you can answer that one. That's supposed to be like this village sigil, I think. Uh, but we're kind of we're kind of hurting in the story department right now. I mean, we had a really really good art uh, story writer. A really good writer wrote us the prologue for the game. And yeah, it's a wave. It's a wave sigil. And it's supposed to be like the Horizons seal, basically, for the city. This this village is called Horizon. So there's gonna be. I think there's gonna be a bigger town like further inland. It's going to be like a major port, and it's going to have a different sigil, but I, I don't like putting this on a stick like this. Um, I'm not going to watch that video. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, I think that we're going to try to make like a sigil, you know, for each city, for each town, or, you know, at least for each region, so they kind of like ties the world together a little bit. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna watch it in the middle of the stream. So I kind of like broke the game a little bit because I, I enabled some stuff earlier. So I was ri riding around in the... Oh, okay, cool. Check it out. Okay, good. I will check it out. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. So a lot of you guys have seen this stuff already. I think we went through and replaced most of the assets for the for the uh, background plateaus. Some of these little cave openings and stuff are still the old stuff that hasn't been fixed yet. But we'll, we'll get to it. I think we replaced all the branches on the trees with like good looking branches. So they're not just sticks that stick out of the tree like a stick. No, I mean we we've got a guy that's a really excellent writer. His name's Kendall Karch. He's a he's an author. Like he's a published author. He wrote a story about um, about uh, dwarves called the Fool's Errand. It's on Amazon now. It's really good. Or what I've read of it is really good, at least. I've read everything except for, like, the last two chapters. Uh, I didn't even finish that up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he wrote this prologue to it. It's really excellent. I wish somebody would link it, actually. If one of you guys can link the text to it or, or like, do a haste, haste bin or something like that of the text of the prologue and show these guys. It's just really outstanding writing, man. Um, but uh, he just has been really busy lately, so we're trying to kind of round out everything for this Kickstarter campaign before we pick him up. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't trying to, you know, actively complain about the story because he's really doing a great job. I just, I was just saying that in, in our current state, we're a little bit lacking. We just need to have another little powwow and kind of determine. It was bat meat. It was chicken of the cave. Chicken of the cave, indeed. <laughs> yeah, as it stands, um, any any enemy you kill that has that would normally have edible meat, it just drops. Um, it'll drop a, an icon of food that you know it, it'll be different based on what you kill, but in reality, it all just goes into your food pile, so to speak. Um, that's going to be utilized when you're when you're traveling. Yeah, so you're gonna have right a now I've got twenty-one food down here, but. Don't, don't pay any attention to the time counter, because that's just, you know, that's, uh, that's for debug purposes. I'm going to put it in the dev con instead of having it in there. But uh, the food is supposed to be great over time, based on how many crew members you have. <laughs> no, it's five, it's five pawns, Grandmaster. I need that overlay, man. I should, maybe I should stop and watch that video. <laughs> <laughs> so
So, yeah, kind of what I'm doing now is a little bit pointless because um, I've already fixed the ship with the DevCon, so at this point I'm just kind of like progressing through the areas. Oh, it's time to go to the second island. Yeah, I mean, well, I still gotta beat the, the, the Wind Sorcerer in this area. Which has yet to be created. Just like the second island. <laughs> oh, nice. What's up, Bob? It's good to see you, man. Yeah, I'm just kind of playing through some stuff. We're doing a little bit of development and mostly, uh, 13 <laughs> year old down the street. You know, doing a little speaking bit of bug squashing and, and we're going to put in a new bank feature and some other things. Dude, that pickaxe is way too fast. You think so? Yeah. So I guess it's kind of hard to see, but that he, that pickaxe that he's got is a it's deadly, man. It hits you. Oh man. If you're trying to take on form and Mev with only one uh, one part, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah. Well, it's a, it, it, it's a it's a really good skill check for him because before this, before he had the pickaxe, see, the whole idea is that. Oh yeah, it's it's in here. I mean, I can do it already. I'm just kind of playing through it for the sake of playing. I don't hardly ever get to. See, once he's without the pickaxe, which he should never be, I need to fix that right now. Uh, it's really easy. So, and we also made it made this. We made this sub weapon today. Oh look, it doesn't drop the weird. Okay, gotcha. Why didn't any, any of you other guys tell me that was a problem until now? Because <laughs> I can't listen to the stream. We made it so that the uh, when you beat this guy, he drops the two-handed pickaxe, and he also drops the thrown weapon pickaxe and the lev orb, so we're hope hoping that somebody can explain, uh, like an NPC at some point can explain the lev orb and like what that is. Um, and how It's basically the Castlevania hearts. That's pretty much the uh, the whole idea here. So you've got these little these little orbs that are Leventera in the form of you know a little ball that you pick up, like a little energy ball. And then when you use your sub weapon, it, it consumes that instead of you know explaining that you have like 100 pickaxes in your back pocket or whatever. So it's kind of the, the same mechanic as the Castlevania hearts. This sub weapon today, it's got like a little arc to it. Uh, it's just really crappy, but it's a good place to show it. So it doesn't just go straight out front. You know? That is a lot of bats. Yeah, it's that room is junk, man. We need to do something else with it. So yeah, I mean, you get this whole world map traversal thing with the ship, and you're gonna have some naval combat type stuff, and, but then, you know, when you go on land, you get this, you know, you get this kind of Castlevania type of thing. Now, uh, disclaimer here, this area is supposed to be a palace. It hasn't, it hasn't had any assets made for it yet. All the visual assets you see here were created by me, and are thus no good. So, take them. Game, grain of salt. No. <laughs> so, yeah, no kidding. Um, so hopefully, the concept here at this point is um, that the enemies, as you get closer to the end of the palace, are going kind of further and further into this. are controlled by the evil force that's, you know, uh, that's controlling the region. You guys, man, killing me with stuff. But, uh, 
but so it's going to be understood and apparent that the enemies that are in this area are going to be kind of a little bit more mystical than the stuff you've seen before. So these bats aren't going to be bats, they're probably going to be like little flying imps or something like that. And I just fell to the floor, so I'm not sure. But I'm also kind of rewarded because I get a little chest here. Lev orb spawns, I won't have to worry about, you know. I mean, right now, the, the use of the sub weapon is really sparing, but it should be somewhat sparing, but you don't want to make it completely trivial. Oh my gosh, man. And my black. Yeah, oh yeah, that idea I had. I was I was talking earlier a little bit about a way to, to regain level orbs, and I think rather than having them drop off of enemies, maybe we could create little like wind gusts that just kind of randomly show up, and you stand in them, and they give you a few level orbs. Hmm. Yeah, that could. I be. mean, it, it would make more sense than you know them dropping along the, the chicken of the cave. Yeah, that's true. So basically, like thinking the like the the candles or something from Castlevania. Yeah, like, yeah, just a little, like, make, like, a little gust appear, maybe even in hard to reach places and whatnot, and, you know, you go and you stand in it and it spews out a few level orbs. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of breaking something and get them, though, too. I mean, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're fine if they're in chests or pots or, you know, crates. Yeah, um, pots are nice. I like that. <laughs> See, I really desperately need something now, though, for that, so... I'm just going to spawn it. The, this part of the, the level is just... I don't... It's not weak. I think they're just trolling you at this point. Yeah, it's... There we go. Music? Uh, that was me. Um, I've composed a, nearly 100% of the music that you hear. Uh, Will Whalen composed some of the pieces that haven't been used yet in the game. Um, actually, one of the pieces that hasn't been used yet, the uh, boss fight with the foreman, that was his riff. He wrote that on guitar, and then I com converted it kind of to a uh, Family Tracker. I used the Family Tracker to uh, sequence it to, to work with the NES uh, hardware chip plus VRC actually. Konami VRC expansion. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Family Tracker, but basically, really. Okay. Uh, it must be a level and level thing in OBS. Let me check that out. You guys will just have to let me know here. Uh, the system sounds, uh, I don't know. Ah, uh, there yeah, we go. Yeah, Lady Star. The, uh, that's the whole goal of this project, is to recreate a game in the NES style that's the game that we would have wanted to play when we were little. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the whole concept. I mean, the... Alright. Is the... There, you should... The level should be good now, I think. Whenever the stream catches up, if you don't mind letting me know a little more. Still? Check. How about now? <laughs> I forget the delay, man. It's killing me. Still? Levels? 
Okay, there we go. Uh, what I was saying about the music, though, was that um, it's it's in it's composed in Family Tracker. Um, I did all the music except for one piece. The, the, the there's three pieces that have two haven't been used yet. One of them has been used in the Foreman fight, and uh, it was. Uh, we're gonna hopefully we're gonna try to record some of it live to get a stream going, but. Uh, but we use Fama Tracker, and I don't know if any of you ever used Fama Tracker before, but it's a sequencer for uh, the NES audio chip. But there's an expansion module in it called the VRC6, and it was one that Konami used. Um, um, Konami used it on the Famicom. That's for you, Alfred. Um, and in Japan, they released a. Uh, they made it so that the manufacturers could put their own expansion chips in the cartridge. So uh, Konami had one called the VRC6, and it like added a lot more robust sounds and stuff to it. So we actually used that one. But to most folks, it just sounds like you know NES music. You know, uh, I showed this off last time I was here, so I'm not going to go over it a lot. But this is going to be like a Simon Puzzle thing. So once this, this thing lights up, there's going to be like a sequence you have to go through and get cracked to open up this door. So yeah, it's a yeah, it's a it's a Jenny tank, uh, Kanger Jenny tank. It's vape. I mean, it's it's five pawns, uh, Grandmaster. <laughs> I need to do that text over overlay, man. Not we. <laughs> so, so this area here is something new that we did too. Is that we made an actual hole that you can go into to store your goods. And once I get the goods vendors fixed, which should be pretty soon, we'll be able to actually uh, put crates in there. So, uh, so now I've already fixed the ship from earlier, so you can actually travel the ship. But, uh, I need to set up a way that you can get more cannonballs. So maybe we should do the dev part of that now. Uh, what do you think, Nick? Just make a devcon command. A devcon command for what? Um, to just uh, give yourself more cannonballs. Um. Oh yeah, I guess you're gonna have to because they're not really something you can pick up in the overworld, are they? Or in the yeah, there's no there's no pickup for it or no like way to get them at all. So this was Gary. Uh, Gary's in here now. Uh, Lasso Games. Gary. He's he's the, he did the world map pretty much single handedly. Um, he did the uh, I did the wind system. As you can see, the wind is like kind of pushing you one way. You can sail with the wind and you get a little bit of a speed boost. Um, and the little waves are just like little indications of which way the wind is blowing. You see the waves and the clouds both move in the same direction as the wind. So the waves are kind of just pop up randomly. They show you which way the wind's blowing. So we used to have like a little indicator on it, but um, uh, we decided that it would be better just to like show you with the world instead of telling you with a little indicator thing. Thank you, Lady Stardust. That's uh, very kind of you. Um, we are uh, going to be launching Kickstarter campaign August 22nd. We're still working on getting all the reward tiers set up uh, at Kickstarter time. Game's going to be ten dollars. You'll get a copy of that whenever it's released, if we get funded, of course. And um, then there'll be a lot of really other cool stuff. Like we'll have a box. I wanted to show you guys this too while I'm while I'm sitting here. Um, I'll be right back. Um, the game box is going to look like this, kind of. Uh, let me pop out of here real quick so I can take a look at the stream. The game box is going to look like this on the front. This is some art that uh, Will and Jeff did. It will be like this on the front, and then the back will be this. And those of you that are in Huntington, go down to, to Rare Drops. You can get one of these flyers. It's got some information about when the Kickstarter launches and some other things, some screenshots and 
links to the website and stuff. But those of you who get the boxed here, so we're actually going to make a physical box, and um, we're probably going to do a dummy cartridge that is going to have a USB inside of it that you can um, that you can um, actually run the game off of. So it'll be like a little USB stick, but. <clears throat> so anyway, those of you who are just popping in here. This is Leventera, and we're we're kind of just playing right now, but we were doing some development stuff now. Um, but we're I'm looking at trying to make a, a a cannonball drop. So I'm thinking maybe we should put a store or something somewhere, some kind of um, like a way that you can buy cannonballs, maybe from Jonathan, maybe make him a general vendor after the ship is fixed. For now. Just make him sell cannonballs. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, I think that's a decent idea for now. Um... All right. Well, I'm gonna pop out of here real quick. Oh yeah, I meant to make it so the game saves whenever you go back to the map, to the to the ship screen view too. So, although if you can buy if you can buy uh, if you can buy cannonballs from the guy that's on the ship, that kind of doesn't really make any sense, does it? Because if he already has cannonballs, he's like, why are you holding down on me? <laughs> so, so really, we need to make a vendor somewhere. You actually got to turn off this Slack notification thing. Oh, yeah, you can see them all. Everybody look at our Slack channel. Oh, I, so you can... I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think they can see it on Twitch, never mind. Okay, well, you can whenever I've got the, uh, whenever I've got the uh, window open, so... <laughs> Alright, let's go back to the village and see. Hey, this would be a good time to populate that little area. Since this is a dev stream, we might actually want to do some dev while we're... Got everybody here. Uh, whoops. Yeah, do you want me to throw together the vendor real quick? I don't know how much. I'm trying to think of what you've edited and whether or not I'm going to screw it up. Yeah, it's an E-pin. I mean, it's not... It's not not weed. Yeah, in here, let's just put like a... Actually... Actually, you should probably do it, because I mean... Well, let's do, the, let's do the pier. Dude, let's just go Let's go all, all out, connect the pier, just like with a little gate, and then put a vendor on the pier. And then we'll put the goods vendor out there, too. Okay. So, let me swap screens back over here. Um... <laughs> yeah. 90% of the channel is just trolling about weed. So it's... Uh, I'm, I'm just going to exit out of Slack entirely so we don't get any crossover here. So what we were just talking about doing is we wanna, we've want we been working on this little... Uh, <laughs> this is a game dev stream, not drug dev stream. <laughs> Let's talk about game dev. So we're going to... Uh, go to this pier room that's kind of started on it so it's not really a big deal but um yeah definitely man if this game was called 420 blaze it then we'd already be funded by now and all be millionaires <laughs> <laughs> i mean apparently i mean it's, it's been all it is all right so uh so let's connect this in somehow um I haven't looked at that in a long time. That is rough looking. I know, man. It's, it is. It's, it's. It needs some, needs some loving for sure. So there's Jonathan. Maybe you scoot him over a little bit more, even. <laughs> <laughs> just keep on pushing him towards the edge of the world. Yeah, just till eventually he's out of there. So let's just pull, let's just pop a door down and. And uh, yeah, if those of you just seeing this, we're using the Game Maker Studio as the main car carrying the load of the code and stuff so the room editor in game maker studio is probably the worst it's the biggest it's the biggest limiting factor i've found in making a game in game maker studio is this is this room editor is just absolute garbage so um you know that's a that's a, a challenge that we're having to overcome but you know uh
Yeah. Yeah, somebody's going to have like a like a sound bite of me just like clipped out sound bite of me just saying 420 blaze it over and over again and me like puffing on the e-cig. It'll take long till they find that picture of you uh, with your custom mod. Oh yeah, I know, man. Yeah, that thing was awesome though. The power supply hooked straight in. Obviously, that door is just temporary. We're, we're gonna we'll make like a, yeah. It's just gonna be a gate, so I mean, it's it is totally temporary. Um, what is this? X and S. What do we got here? This is sixteen, thirty two, uh, seven fifty two, one sixty. I will pop a door down here too to go back the other way. Well, actually, you don't really need a door there. You could just make it if you walk right across the stream. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I could. No BJ jump instead. Otherwise, you would be able to walk right across the stream to your death. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you would. I just no. saved a bug that we didn't have to fix. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad we're doing the stream and everything like that, but I'm also glad that we're doing a like a closed jam too, because the 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 weed dog and stuff is old. I guess I could mit mitigate it by not vaping on screen, but you know. Or we could tell Gary to go into Nazi mod mode, but nobody wants to do that. Do what? Have Gary go into Nazi mod mode and purge a, purge all the the weed dog. Nah, dude. I mean, at least a little bit of conversation. I mean, even if it's unrelated. Still, people are here. They're watching, so they know what's going on. So that's all that matters to me, at least. Um, okay, what is this coordinates here? I got windows all over the place because I'm using one screen to monitor the the stream. 1664 by 176. Okay. Now, I need at least a ladder and a Kickstarter. You know, I'm just <laughs> I can't believe it. Tell tell them about the guy on Kickstarter today that was that was trying to raise money to buy a new MacBook. He was making a game. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. He had a. I don't want to dig up the link right now, but he had a. Um... He essentially had like a sketch of a fighting game, and it was just a solo guy. I mean, his his concept art was pretty was pretty good looking, but essentially in his uh, in his description for what he was looking for in Kickstarter, his, his only limitation was he was making it on a 2012 MacBook Pro, and uh, he had to upgrade that in order to finish the game. So his his, his uh, Kickstarter goal was essentially the the cost of a new MacBook. <laughs> And he, he promised with, with all of his heart that if you funded him, he would buy that MacBook and finish the game. Mm-hmm. That's what I was saying. This, I want our Kickstarter to be, you know, a testament to what we've already done and not, like, promises about what there might be down the road, you know. So we we want to we wanna make it, you know, some good stuff. Pay no attention to some of these sprites, man. They're They're not good, so... OBJ goods vendor, OBJ. Well, half the stuff in the in the Game Maker Studio room editor is uh, it gets the the actual code within the object rewrites what the sprite is. So the sprite is just a placeholder that we look at in the room editor. What you see in the actual game will usually yeah. be different. The game he was working on was probably a little bit more beefy than. I mean, he was working on a fighting game that had a lot of like big images and stuff like that. But yeah, you're right. I mean, I I don't know. Now we need a general vendor that can sell. Oh my gosh, dude! I'm gonna have to write a script for this too, aren't I? To like give you cannonballs, huh? Yeah, you'll have to make a new script. That shouldn't be. I mean, that'll be a three-line script. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, what is it? Oh, 
that's nothing. I'll uh, I'll pull the specs from from my uh, my laptop that I use at work to do do dev on at times, and it is an utter turd. We use it as the the measuring stick for for performance in our game. <laughs> I'm just going to call it SCR ship material and then do uh, S script for zero mod equals uh, one. I guess cannonballs will be one. Oh, yeah. It's going to give me an error on that because it doesn't exist yet. You should be able to make a, an NES style game on any machine yeah. um, this century, and it should be fine. But in reality, with the the, the resources Game Maker Studio takes up, at least it's uh, it ends up not being as feasible. No. Pick up, so, pick up. Can't imagine the guys that did all this in machine code in the 80s. <laughs> no kidding, man. I mean, really, it's it's really impressive, dude, that they did that. Where did I... Where did you indeed? I know. I'm just trying. I'm trying to figure out where I did the like the thing for the food. Re res SCR resource purchase. No. Food plus equal. Look at that script. Food plus equal one. <laughs> Wasn't Maybe even that trying, one didn't dude. Need to be a script. What's that? Maybe that one didn't need to be a script. I know. It's been so long since I've did since I've messed with this stuff, man. I don't even remember. I'm so far displaced from him to this point. I mean, one line of code in a script. I think maybe I was thinking I was going to expand it later on. And then I ended up not expanding it. Well, I'll just make a new script, dude. Jeez. <laughs> just make another one line script. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's all our game is, is piles and piles of one line scripts. And then our object code just is hundreds of lines of calling on them. Well, there was one thing though, is I, I like, I check for, I check for uh, argument zero. So in this case, argument one is going to be argument one. So, you know, for the sake of time and since we're streaming, and I'd like for it to appear that I know what I'm doing, I'm going to uh, troubleshoot all this stuff later. And just. Uh, and just write it manually for functionality sake say what you're just going to write it manually for functionality sake yeah it's fine um. and even still it's probably still going to give me a ga game game breaking crash though so. That's that's. I'm just flying through it. See, considering, especially considering, I haven't even tested any of these bumps or anything like that yet either. So, probably all going to fail miserably. But let's pop back in, see what we get. How much you want to bet? I don't even get to the RMP room. I'll be surprised if you don't get a compile error. Hey. Hey, you didn't. No compile error. That's a. That's a happy day for me, man.
Hey, there's my convenient uh, door. There it is. That was a collision event. Hmm. I know what it is. It's just because I didn't get. It's because I set the wrong variable for the target room. Oh, yeah. No, I know. That's what it is. Code monkey. It's just. It's checking. It's checking against the price set that I set previously in the uh, vendor. So in this case, it is twenty-five. But oh, I said greater than. Did I say greater? Than? Yeah, I, I said it. I said if it's if it's greater than or equal to twenty-five. So sorry. Let me switch the scene back. No, it was a no. I, if you probably you might be right, man. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> uh, sorry, I switched the the screen the screen the scene over prematurely. Yeah, we're looking at we're looking at old black screen. Hey, those are you said it yourself. Those are the best streams. The they best are. streams are the ones that just have a black a black screen, and nothing else, right? Let me bank some of this money while I'm at it. <laughs> I love that we can do that now, man. I like, think it's really just such a huge thing to me. It was so necessary because death was so painful. Yeah. Nice. Right in. No problem. Well, the top of the ladder doesn't work, so there's that. <laughs> I'll, I'll get the. Oh! I forgot. <laughs> I forgot, I forgot to put ground on any of this. <laughs> I forgot to put ground on any of the beer stuff. It's just visual. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, and then you pop out of the tank, but at least I can go back and forth here. Oh, wow, the Twitch delay's gotten pretty in stream. I'm, uh, it's at least a minute behind now. Oh, really? Classic, well, classic face palm, man. Okay, well, let's well, go. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter in general, especially when I can see your, your screen a lot. Okay, well, I'll just pop, screen. pop the scene back over, fix the problem. <laughs> I can't believe I did that, man. They're so close, just so far away. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> You're sitting there jumping, trying to get to them. And... Now here's the question: Should it be jump through platform or just ground? It's probably just ground, right? Because of how thick it is. Well, those are jump through platforms in the cave, but I think in the mm -hmm. cave that we need to change those to not. Or they, we need to either change those to a different looking platform, or because I mean, honestly, really, something that thick you shouldn't be able to jump through. Yeah. In my opinion. I mean, I tend to agree, too. So in that case, I'll just make it flat ground. Let's see what Twitch that chat thinks. Do you think you should be able to jump through logs that thick? Yeah, what do you guys think? No. That's, yeah. that's all the confirmation I need. Yeah, same here. I'm gonna frame this out with these little things to see if I can like if it'll help me to stand on this, if it'll give me any problems. What are the green boxes? They're they're jump through platforms, so I should be able to climb through them and stuff, but Do you not still have like a ladder top object? There there is and it's there, but for some reason I keep falling through it, so I'm not gonna mess with it right now. I'm just gonna do this. Daniel's way, dude. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> You're familiar with it. I'm very familiar with it. I generally have to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> a 
We're doing all this just so we can buy cannonballs. That basically served no purpose. <laughs> so far. You know you can shoot them with that, that one boat that spawns. Yeah. Band-aids on band-aids, man. That's my... That's... That is my whole MO, man. Oh, whoops. I forgot to switch the scene back. Yeah, unless your job on the team is the person that has to rip the band-aids off and figure <laughs> out how to actually fix it. Yeah. Nobody ever cares about that guy, though. Mm. Well, there's the problem that I induced. <laughs> now you have to drop down with the jump. I'll fix it later. Aw. Well, at least the error's out when I try to buy from him. Let me go get some of my bank money out. There's also no way to see if you have like what your ship stock is. Oh man. Wait, why do I only have two? Did you see that? I can't see your screen. Dude, my money just dropped. Wait, you can't see my screen. No, I mean I can see your Twitch screen. Oh, so it's behind. It's about a minute and a half behind. Something in this room, something in this room is making my money drop every time I come into it. Yeah. Like, can just I troll toll. Outright. Yeah, Froxy, no, there are going to be banks in at every region, and that you're eventually going to get one on your ship, too. So, yeah, so it just took, it's just taking away 27. It's just taking away 25 straight out. All right. Time to switch the scene, squash that bug. So probably stands the reason that it was something that was in the uh, creation code of one of these dudes. Price is zero is twenty five. Oh, oh, I forgot. You got to do it this way. If you tell it to run the script, it just runs the script. So I actually bought cannonballs every time I walked through the door. So the way that I wrote... <laughs> That's an efficient vendor. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's... He knows what you want before you've even got to He him. does, man. So basically, like, uh, the way that I wrote the thing was it, it, it finds... You know, I'll show you guys the code just so some of, you, some of you code monkeys can either appreciate it or make fun of me a lot for how I wrote it one way or the other. Um, pretty much, uh, what it does is it checks the script, it, it, ex it runs this function here, this script execute, and then it looks for the asset of a script that you define, and then it sends the argument back. So, instead of just, because if you put the script in the creation code, it just executes it immediately when you walk through the door, just like I did then. So what you have to, I have to do is like parse the the script as a string, and then run this script execute function that's built into Game Maker Studio, and then so it just will search my asset index for the script that I've named in there, and then run it after the uh, after the store transaction is successful. So so basically what it was doing was checking it every time I came through the door and because I had it in creation code, it's like as soon as the instance was created, it was running that script. So if I had 25, it was taking it away from me and adding five cannonballs. So. Scene. Frame rate. Let's see if I've got any money left in the bank now that I've squandered it all on cannonballs, which... Theoretically, I should have plenty of cannonballs now. Okay, so I don't have enough. And he didn't take it away from me. And he does air out. There we go. Okay, so I 
should be completely stocked on cannonballs now. I mean, it is a weird way to do it, but the reason we we set it up that way... Did it take 50? No, I bought two. I just... I tapped it. I tapped it twice. I, I had 66, I think, and I just... I tapped the button twice to buy it. Like, two iterations of cannonballs. Yeah. So... So there's the two that I just bought and the two that I already had. So they're all in there. No? Oh, I had 116? Oh, whoops. Huh. So it did it twice. It ran it twice, huh? But it only gave me... Hmm. Also, it partially works. <laughs> How many did it take away total? <laughs> it took 50 every time I purchased. Just go back and buy that. Yeah, I'll go check it out again. Good night. Thanks. Dude, we can totally put a fast travel guy out there now and a port. We can make that port go to RMP or now. I think there is still a fast travel guy out there. Unless you oh, got rid of him. No, I, I got rid of him. Swan. Sorry. I'm deleting my dudes. It took 50 every purchase. Okay, there's 66. Huh. Sure enough, it does, doesn't it? But he only gives you the... I don't know how many I had. I think he only gives me five, but he takes 50. All right. Let's look at the code. Yep. Well, five for 50. Well, that's fine. I mean, it might be a fair price, but that's not what I asked it to do, so <laughs> we got to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the market, I guess. Alright, well, let's see here. Is there any reason why this would run twice? I think I know. Because basically it's looking for this resource based purchase, which I didn't establish. So it's like running it because the resource requirements are met, but then running it again because this. Well. Because the money requirements are, ret, are, are met. So I set it up originally so that you have this uh man I'm embarrassed that I even have this code on here. It isn't so de such desperate disarray. It's junk. Hey sorry about that I had an unexpected break. Uh did we figure out why you were getting stiffed? Mm I think I mean it's definitely in here because uh the resource based purchasing that I set up before. Like it's looking for the resource requirements which are already set. But see, it should be skipping that over because if it's if it is string, so resource zero should not be a string. It should be zero. So it actually should pass over this. So never mind. Ah, uh, no, wait. You have them set up as ob as a obj general vendor, whose creation code creates a resource zero, doesn't he? Yeah, I know, but it 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 doesn't create it oh, as it a doesn't... string. It creates it as a as a number. It creates it as zero. Hmm. 
but now I want to look at him. I want to look at his creation code to find out. Yeah, I did have to mess with him a little bit today, but I don't think I messed with his creation code. What is he in NPCs? Yep. Yeah, yeah there it's, it is. Should be zero. So, yeah, once again, it should just pass over it. So, let me look at his creation code that I wrote in. Okay. So, I mean, that all seems sound. Where does the actual money exchange take place? It's in the SCR script? General Vendor. I was just looking okay. at it a little bit ago. It's that big convoluted pile of donkey dung. No, no, it's fine. It's complex, but it has to be. I mean, it's no. I mean, it, this can be this can be streamlined so much more, dude. Like this is this code is clunky as it can be. This was just one of those things. I had an idea that I wanted to do, and I wanted to make it modular. So we made it like hyper modular now we need to go back and like clean all this up like all of this resource stuff can be done with a for loop like I can probably do one for loop to suit to like contain all of this garbage man look at how repetitive it is and it's also hardwired so that you can only have four items at one time so that's something yeah, we're going to have to rectify later the too four items thing is definitely a big one so, that we're going to have to fix so see look at this okay well see this part gets this part gets gets passed over because it's not a string. Resource zero is definitely not a string. Yeah, <laughs> you robbed me blind, man. So, switch plus case zero. So it's case zero. This part gets gets skipped over. So resource zero is entirely, entirely skipped. Then, this bracket should be entirely skipped. So money equals prices. Script execute asset get index get script zero and apply script zero mod which should be zero. Oh, it already takes the money away. And I wrote it to take the money away in the script. Well, there you go. So there you go. Just take the money out of the script and problem solved. Yep. So actually, it already, it already checks even, <laughs> and that's and that's why I have one line script. <laughs> but it's necessary with the way that the vendor's code is written. And that's why I have a one line script. <laughs> oh my god, dude. I can't believe that. I really can't believe that that's how it ended up. <laughs> you know, really, we could probably write write all of the um we could probably just write all of the the vendor's uh goods as a as an array and then um just write one one script that's a huge switch case. Hmm. Yeah, like object oriented that doesn't have to be. <laughs> it's like taking a procedural language, writing an object oriented language out in it, then using that object oriented language to write another procedurally generated language. <laughs> a procedural language. Dude, let me just pop pass this in here. If you don't mind, Code Monkey, could you add, uh... That's my Skype. If you don't mind. And then, if you guys, man, want to follow us on Twitch or... Uh, it's got the information down there. Gary, give us the links. Yeah, hook us up with the... Hook us up with the links, man. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to pander on it too much, you know, because you guys are. I'm glad that you're here, but I don't know. I guess I don't know who you are then. 
Or I don't know if you're joking or I don't know. I can't math, but I'm guessing that that's right. So, what are we thinking? Putting a blackjack down here in the water? Yeah, that was where I had it originally before you went and deleted it. Thanks, man. Yeah, nice, it works. So, so one of the cool things is that there's, and I want to try to illustrate it, and I'm pr it's probably going to fail, but so this guy here, the goods vendor, this, these market values here actually fluctuate over time. So I put this little debug code in here to, to keep track of what time of day it is and, and everything, so it really is, the time is just a step counter, and there's so many hours within each one. So I don't know how I got to be day 15, but probably where I was doing all that ship travel. But, um... Does time, uh, does time go faster when you're on your ship? Say what? Does time pass faster when you're on yeah, your ship? Yeah, it does. When you're moving, when you're moving, time goes by faster. So, um, yeah, I don't have actually a second counter. I'd like to put it in the DevCon command, but see, so there's a global market value and the prices change, uh, every day. So, um... After the day goes from 15 to 16, it should change. And then there's also a local markup, too. So, um, the day changes, I think, at 28,000. No, you can't go wherever you want. There are certain, like, little nodes. Uh, I mean, eventually, it's going to be... This world map is going to be populated when we're done. So, I mean, it's going to be... There's going to be ports all over the place. But, um, right now, we just... We just put this on here. No, we're on. Go we're in a Google Hangout. Um, we put this. No, we're in Google Hangouts. We put this area in here, just like staging area, just to like show off the ice assets and stuff. Um, yeah. So the day should pop forward at 16, and then. Well, I guess it didn't do it. Hmm. I thought it was every day that it changed 65, 30, 120, 75. Well, in reality, the vendor at a, um, at a different port should have different prices anyway, regardless of the day. Yeah, I know. This is, bother this is bothering me now, because <laughs> those global prices are supposed to change uh, every day. So, Oh, there, there. Oh, so it only does it on creation code. So they flu the prices fluctuate, but they only fluctuate every day, and then whenever you come back into the room, it updates. So I should probably make that update in real time, I guess. That's a design question for later, I guess. But so these guys are just working off of global market values. But the idea is that you know each area, each region has its own markup slash markdown too. And um, so like stuff that costs a certain amount, you know, in the beginner area, you know, will be. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're in mid-transaction and you had like half of your load up or whatever. But the idea is, so I buy a load of, you know, whatever, something that's really cheap from this area, and then I sail back down to where I was, and of course it would be consuming food per crew member, at least is the idea. At least it doesn't seem to be working right now. But per crew member, you, you consume so much food. Oh, the wind's just shifted. Uh, and then you come back down to your port over here, go ashore. We're gonna have some nice little transitions here for the, like the moving ashore and stuff like that. Yeah, in the, in the finished product, you're not gonna have to swim out to your ship. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then 
the idea is that there'll be some local markup things, so I buy something cheap up there and then come back and sell it to him, and he's going to have a higher, you know, price for it here. So the so the price always is recommend it, it's like representative of a market price. So you buy and sell at the same rate. It's kind of like more like stock trading than it is, you know, actually buying something from him. So so I would load up my ship here and then, you know make the deal. Of course, there's a, there's a really catastrophic bug we found at the start of the stream here that you can actually load your load your stock up, and even though I don't have the money for it, I can just cancel out of the window, and I still have the goods, so, <laughs> so i got to fix that bug at some point as well. So, you know, we might want, you might want to consider uh, disjoining the, the goods from the time, because... With the way it is now, you could essentially just get on your boat and wait for a couple days to pass, which doesn't take very long, and then go right back into the same port, and the, the prices have changed. Yeah, that's true, but but the the time that it takes, the time that it takes to do that, it 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 goes by really kind of slowly. I think, like, um, basically, you know. It'd be changing every day. If you're going around on your boat, you're you're consuming food basically to advance time. You know. Oh yeah, that's true. That's so true. so you have to pay for food. So I'm thinking there's going to be a food vendor somewhere. I mean, there already are a few food vendors you can buy a little cheap stuff. But okay, help me set this up because I want to set up this last. I want to set up this last thing here before I call it a night on on the stream, and I want to put a fast travel guy here on oh, the pier. Goodness. Okay, hold on a second. All right. What all do I need to set up in order to make this thing a reality? Um. Well, in the create, honestly, I think all you need is well. First off, in his instance creation code, you need um, to define ft underscore location or loc, and then ft underscore id. That's okay. going to equal uh, the top one's going to equal one two. And for those of you that don't know, Wantu Peninsula is the name of the region that we're in currently. Actually, it's Largo, but Wantu we'll is the uh, was the program name. <laughs> that was what we named it the first time. Oh, I will, okay. man. I'll hit you up, but it's fine. I saw that your code bills on that. It's okay. Well, I'm right. not changing that, so don't worry about that's it. What, that's legacy code for the win. That ID is going to be. Uh, I would just make it FT underscore peer. Does it have to be? A, it's a string. Yes. Okay. Now you're going to have to go to... Um, Script? Yes. SCR Fast Travel, probably. Yes. And then uh, the first one is going to be SCR Fast Travel Menu Populate. Okay. Um, you're going to have to copy and paste one of those that says if DS map exists... Mm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, just copy one. Oh wait, no, wait, wait, hold on. That already exists. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got peer, peer once. Horizon Pier. Yeah, I already made a peer once. So oh, okay, so nice. The code is actually still all there. So actually, that should work as it is. Oh, excellent, dude. Because the rest of it is so modular that it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, there was one other thing I needed to do. I need to make it to when you go to Largo Pier, that you or the Horizon Pier, it actually, whenever. Uh, whenever Blackjack says go ashore, yeah, yeah, it takes I, you. To, I, it doesn't take you to the beach. Yeah, so, so I actually have SCR go ashore here. Uh, Largo should equal Arnium Pier, and uh, it, dads without kids currently it does not, but that is something that's going to be in the final game. We just we haven't come up with a balance for how much to charge and I mean because in reality you should charge more if you're going to be traveling further and it's it's thing it just hasn't well, come together yet the way that it is currently too this fast travel guy is part of your crew so he kind of hooks you up but the same object we can use and reskin it and put him in other exotic locations as like a you know some kind of Sherpa or something like that that you just find in your travels that like unlocks new locations for you or something. So this particular one 
is part of your crew so he doesn't charge you but the way that the object is set up we can put through creation code using the same object you know how much to charge you know for where you go or whatever so I think it yeah, could be cool it's, they're not all, only the ones on the first island are going to be blackjack in a boat rowing you to where you want to go the ones in the future you know they'll be they'll be stylized towards the, the theme of the island that you're on or the theme of the land mass that you're on yeah so I don't know if you guys have seen any of the promo material that well we, I, I know you haven't because we haven't been showing anybody but there's basically going to be three main regions and one of them is going to be like this piratey type stuff the other one is going to be like Japanese uh, you know uh, far eastern architecture bamboo you know cherry blossoms samurai. stuff like that samurai type characters and then the third major region is going to be kind of like a stereotypical sand Arabian you know Aladdin type of environment sultans and fine carpets and stuff like that so there's going to be very like stereotypical type of environments but it's going to give us a lot of opportunity to build some really like uh, you know expansive and different type of things that we can add and uh, hopefully make it a lot of fun a lot of uh, variety uh, so let's just put him 228 by 126 Yeah, I wanted to change that music too because I noticed that the door wasn't musical for this. And I think you have to say that it's a musical door for it to, to trigger. And then you have to put something in the creation code of the room. Yeah. So in RMP, I've got to put something in the creation code here. This is... <sighs> There's some other stuff I have to do to, to get it to work completely right, but let's just try this out and see if it's going to work. Probably one of those things that Game Maker Studio has nifty little tools for that we have just ignored and written ourselves. What's that? All the music playing. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm certain that it does. There's, there's a number of times that I've been like, oh my gosh, dude, I can't believe Game Maker actually had a thing in place to do that. And Yeah, yo, yeah, well, actually, now that you mention it, Will's idea of, of having the uh, the movie platforms just be static objects. Oh, with a path? a path? Oh, Yeah, I'm really going to work on implementing that because that's going to be way easier than what I made. Feel kind of dumb, but I didn't really know about all of those options whenever I made the moving platform. Oh, so. that's like me with doing timelines for the bosses, dude. Like that just it just changed everything once I discovered you could use a timeline for the boss to ca yeah. instead of writing these custom step counters every single time. Ridiculous, man. Yeah, for those for those still on the channel, I spent hours upon hours upon hours writing the moving platforms that you see around around the game. Sometimes, oh wow, that that looks. It's because of the black sky. Yeah, yeah. Change the water color. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's because of the time of day. Um, yeah, I spent hours writing these moving platforms, and then one of our other uh, artists kind of kindly pointed us to the fact that you can just make a make a small little piece of ground, and then using Game Maker Studios tools, have it follow a path back and forth, and it does it a hundred times cleaner than what I wrote. Musical doors working. Looks like the fast travel guy is working. Farpoint Beach, Horizon Pier. Go to oh, ship. You shouldn't be able to go to the pier when you. Well, I, actually, I don't know if I fixed that yet. Going to where you are from where you are. No, I don't think I have. What do you that mean? To be a, I mean that you don't want where you're at to show up. What is the same? Oh thing yeah. Horizon yeah, I know that'll that'll change a lot of stuff because. Um, like if you go to the mine and then pick up this guy here, he's gonna be a capacity. Lost audio for a second. Oh, man, I died. <laughs> Dude, I'm kind of glad that we got the the save load thing working better now too, cause like 
I feel like comfortable. I can play the game for a little bit and then stop and save it. You know, pick it up it later. Nice. It feels really good. And and also you saw how easy it was to like add new parameters to save too. And that'll open us up a lot of options because we can make like a little like game select screen where it shows like a a little paper doll and like what you've done so far. Yeah, so now the fast travel guy gives you all these other options too since you've been there before. And when, until you've been there, he doesn't it doesn't show up, so but now you can. The another thing is that the assets for the guy is gonna change too. I mean this isn't obviously the final version of the little rowboat ship that was just a little placeholder that I made, so Go ashore. Yeah, and I go ashore because of the port that I'm at, which is here. But if I wanted to go to the beach, I would go ashore. Then go to Parkland Beach. That's a good question. Uh, food, co food costs on fast traveling. That's interesting. Um, no, the only time that it's supposed to cost food, at least, that your that your crew consumes food is when you are moving in the ship, which it actually isn't yeah. act even doing right now. So yeah, the way the way that we have food implemented, because I I, don't know, I can't speak for Jack, but I, I really do tend to be against the idea of just your player having to consume food all the time. It just it ends up being tedious, but. What we've done with food is, is it's kind of a, it's something you have to have on your ship because you're you're out in the water, and you've got you're, you're in towards the end of the game you're gonna have you know lots of different people on your ship and you know they, they've got to eat so <laughs> but when you're when you're on the ground you're gonna be ambiently picking up food all the time so it's <laughs> well that's why we were talking about doing the fishing mini game. Whether you do it like from the ocean, we we're we we're thinking about different ways that you could like encounter food, um, like in the ocean view. So we we're thinking about making like little schools of fish pop up on the world map that you can either just drive over and collect food, or you can drive over to them and it like lets you drop a net or something like that. Or maybe you get a crew member that allows you to, you know, drop a net down and you know grab some fish and then it just adds food to your thing that way I don't know there's a bunch of different ways we can go about it but these little whirlpools and stuff will be able to do some stuff later the Oregon Trail yeah yeah like a little the little hunting thing or something like that of course you know theoretically too there's going to be all these areas along these this land mass here too all these land masses like there'll be little ports and stuff that you can stop at and buy food trade goods with other vendors um you know, go and walk around on land, um, and then do the platforming part and have little creatures to kill and hunt for food. Um, and other things too. I mean, like there'll be, I'm thinking kind of like Skyrim-esque mini quests, like just like this island here could. I mean, you could this landmass right here. You know, we could take this and write a whole little subquest, like a little subplot stuff just surrounded this one island, and, and all it would take from this view. It's over. It's overrun with giant rats, and you have to kill them. Yeah, I mean, anything like that. A dragon, I mean, you know, there's, there's so much possibility here that we could do. So we want to, you know, we want to build on that, the fact that we have this expansive world, and we want to fill it up. And I think that we, I mean, I know we're going to eventually. It's just a matter of time. And hopefully with this, some success with the Kickstarter, it'll, it'll just make it that much easier because we can get our guys, you know, taken care of while they're working on it. But... I mean, you can see we've got these biomes and stuff set up. Um, I'll show you some of the... I don't know if you guys have all seen it or not, but I made some stages um, that's kind of like just different types of environments. I put the little video on YouTube of, um, you know, just of him walking through this little staged area, but this is just kind of like a, a little taste of all the different types of zones that there will be, you know, each is going to have be paired with its own style architecture and its own, you know, kind of um, environments and stuff like that. So it'll be little cool stuff, little Easter eggs and story elements too. I mean, that's the that's the cool part is that there'll be story to go with it. You know, so we just have to 
thanks, man. I mean, I you know, did did some stuff on that. I mean, I think I I drew the I drew the cave system backgrounds. I drew the bamboo. I drew the sand, and uh, I drew everything except for the tree. I think. So. But I appreciate it, man. I mean, it's you know it's it's coming along. You know, we've we've come a long way since February, and I hope that we can make even more progress in the next few months and you know like I said we've got the rest of this month and then August to really get our Kickstarter campaign um, fully you know fully fleshed out and make it something that's Im impressive that people are going to want to be a part of and hopefully we can give everybody some reward tiers that you know allow them to be part of the dev process too and keep doing streams like this to let people you know give their feedback and kind of give ideas and help us troubleshoot code and stuff like that too so um i'm, I'm really excited about it and i think it's going to be a lot of fun either way um even if the kickstarter fails which i, I hope it doesn't but even if it does i mean we're still going to keep on we're going to press on and you know do some other stuff uh, did you guys see mini law we did a we did a huge reveal of that earlier I don't think any of you guys were around, but I'm going to go ahead and push these changes to our repository and um, I'll show you guys a picture of uh, the other game that we revealed that we've been working on. Um, our, our, uh, our art guy that's done a lot of the artwork here, Jeff, he has um, been working his tail off on this game, Mini Law. That is, uh, He's written the story for it, did the art for it. It's just a really, really cool game. But I'll load it up for you guys here, and um, bear with me on the black screen for just a second. I'll give it a pass uh, before I close the stream out tonight. So we started with it, and then we'll go ahead and finish out with it, and then it'll be in the archive. And if you guys know anybody that's interested in what we're doing here, and maybe wants to see a little bit more, you know, point them to our Facebook page, Twitter, and all that stuff, Twitch page, and. Uh, be glad to have them involved in the conversations and definitely hopefully as a potential Kickstarter backers too so which this game we're not going to do a Kickstarter for this one um, that I know of um, we're planning on just taking this one to full release and then just letting it hit the market after we clean it up and hopefully we can use the you know uh, Leventera backbone financially to build on this one and one other game that we've got in the works coming up this one takes a lot longer to compile it's kind of a bigger bigger game so bear with me There we go. <clears throat> yeah, this one will definitely require um, an installer. So, so the concept here is that you are a cop uh, in the future, in um, a kind of a uh, dystopian. Um, you know, me you're part of a mega corporation, and that's you know like runs this city, New Babel. And what you see here is a is a is like a city map that's procedurally generated. It's different every time that you play, and um, all of these zones here have like a happiness rating, and it's just like represented by the level of crime in the in the area. And you can see there's one here that says crime in progress, 90 minutes remaining. So after 90 minutes, the this this crime will end, and the area and all the surrounding areas will take a hit to their happiness. So. Um, you're you're an officer of the Ministry of Law, and uh, you know you can uh, you get these requisition points. You can buy to upgrade your stuff, kind of like uh, faster than light. Um, get you new weapons that you can use, and then after you buy them, you can apply them to your suit. And you got like a little stats readout over here. So um, so basically, it's all it's all a roguelike. It plays very much like faster than light. You know, you travel to the area that you can go to solve to finish the crime. Once you get to the zone, and it gives you a it gives you a task here at the bottom: apprehend subject Brown, Judas Brown. So I'm trying to find Judas Brown. Um, I've got a couple of these uh, 
I've got a couple non-lethal options that I can use to take enemies down, or I can shoot them uh, with my gun and kill them. So, yeah, yeah, this game is, is definitely going to be pretty badass, I think. And now the the challenge here is that we got to try to find Judas Brown, and I, I've got at level zero on my optical scanner. I can't see what their name is until I get so close to them. So I may have just killed them, you know what I mean? Um, so, and then of course you die a lot uh, in the in the roguelike style. But fortunately he's got this suit that's equipped with... Now look at the fat hacker guy, man. This guy will... Um, yeah, there's a lot of like viscera, camera viscera to it. It kind of... It, it's not so bad when you're playing it yourself, but there's a lot going on. Now this one has got two sets of control schemes. The one I'm using right now is mouse and keyboard. You can see I've got the little reticle that I point around and I can just you know, shoot it. But then I can change the control, sch the control scheme to use a, an X input controller and use the sticks to basically do the same thing here. It just gives me this little reticle. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, and it gets even more intense as you get into a... As you get into an area, the camera starts to do even more stuff, and it, it really messes with you. But, but see, I can I can look look back and shoot at, while I'm walking. Um, uh, it's not so bad once you're actually doing the input, but yeah, it's a, a little bit motion sickness inducing, and that's something that we you know we definitely want to get feedback from the community to try and resolve that stuff. Now, some of these some of these non-lethal takedown methods are pretty awesome. You can try to not die and I can bust this guy here with a defibrillate, and you get the scan line effect too. You try to take him down with non-lethal means, and you can talk him down after that, so... He's not having it right now. But eventually you get stuff like rubber bullets and, uh, some other... Jeez, man. This guy's got a high resolve level. It's over his head there, so it's taking quite a bit of uh, physical damage. He's probably, probably going to die. I could have just shot him by now, but I think I'm a little tired of messing with him. So, the whole concept here is that it's a little bit more of a strategic, you know, step by step shooter. As you can see, I kind of ran in and, and uh, just kind of got in the middle of the action, and I'm almost dead. Entirely, and once you die, the game is over. It's just like you know any other roguelike spawn, you flat pass your life, anything like that. Um, but if you succeed, if you manage to succeed the encounter, yeah, dead. So I'll get this little readout here of. Uh, gives you a little finality, you're dead, you know. But if I were to if I had happened to succeed, then I would get requisition points and I would be able to go to Mini Law HQ and buy new weapons and, and Jeff's written in a lot of really cool stuff that you can do, like and this stuff is all yeah, yeah, Judge Dread is the is a big uh is a big uh dread is like a, a huge inspiration for this game, so that's a that was one of the big ones. They're, they're kind of taken from you know 1984, Judge Dread, some taking some pieces from Shadowrun, taking some pieces from uh, you know I mean anything like that. Like a, the the you know, mini law is kind of like you know a big brother thing, and then you, you saw the requisition report was like a mini fact, and so it, it all ties in. It's a really cool story that they've written, and uh, Jeff and Will are really like the brain children behind this. So. So you can see here in the start. Yes. Pull latest. Okay. I will do it. What am I looking at here? Yeah, Deus Ex is a huge, huge one too. Um, uh, enemy shotgun pellets damage decrease. Base player vision increase 20 pixels. Ta enemies take more damage from. Uh, okay. Alright, I should be pulled. 
guys, uh, the, the guy I'm talking about, Jeff here, this is the user Stewart. He, you just see, he's the guy who has done it all, man. He's He started this project. He brought it over to us here and uh, had this this pile of this heaping pile of code that we just like painstakingly went through every every line and just like separated it out you know to, to make these little modules and then he just kind of has built it up so much from that point and then you know he had all these really amazing sprites and these cool camera effects and you know, I helped him out with some of the alpha lighting stuff and Dude, there he is. Leb Daniels, he's right there. If I can just take him down. What's my best strategy here, man? I can't I can't do the dash with the, with the keyboard. I don't know what the button is. Your move. Trouble. <laughs> Daniel's name. So I've actually completed the objective now, but the area is not clear. It won't be clear until I defeat all of the perps, either through any means, lethal or non-lethal. So I've also got these sub weapons that I can use, like the PC shot shell, shot shell here, which will help me kind of dispatch these larger groups. But I still will die a lot. because I don't like to go slow and do things well. I like to just run and shoot and die a lot. Yeah, dude, they tend to globulate, I find. That is so many bullets, man. So what are we, are we just like extremely slow to start with? Because I feel like I used to do a double run, a double tap run, and it used to make me go a little bit faster. Is that like a base speed thing that I need to increase? Question for Jeff. Oh, I'm out of PC shot show. Ah, oh, suck at this game. But it is hard, and it's part of the skill track too. And this, I might add, the stream looks horrible. The, uh, the, the, the scan lines and the, the, the camera effects and all that stuff look really cool on the actual game. They don't look so good in the stream. There's a lot of, like, compression artifacts and stuff like that, so. I definitely implore you guys to check this out whenever the time comes. I mean, this one's still heavily in development, but it is a product and it's something that is it's being being made and I think we're going to start possibly blogging about this one and doing a little bit more getting a little bit more exposure on it now that there is something here that we can play you know and it's it's come so far I think that it's a lot of fun whenever you kind of get in little competitions with each other it's like how far you can go and we're looking at adding some more level types and I'm, I've been working on one that's like a, a train that you're on so that you're like always scrolling and objective is at the front of the train and you've got to you know get to the front of the train and stop them so yeah so there's some we've got some cool ideas coming around the corner but the, you know jeff has been working on all these mechanics uh, to get to get them cleaned up and everything adding stuff like this little you know walking backwards and shooting behind you stuff like that it's just really really neat things that kind of go you know you don't really even think about it when you're playing it but it's just really a lot of painstaking work that he's put into it to make it you know, be as good as it is, so it's really cool. Warren Daniels, there he is again. I just kill everyone, I don't, I don't even go for the, uh... Let me d change the controls. Um, so how did you get, how do you get to this screen here? That has all of the stats on it and stuff. Yeah, so there's also some other things you can do, like this block. There's like a perfect block thing that I'm not good at. So I'm, I'm going to, con to controller controls now, so.
Ah, oh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, like I said, I, I'm really impressed with it too. I'm really impressed with the progress that it's made. And man, that full auto is, just feels so good to use. But it chews through your ammunition like nothing else, man. And and you know all of this, uh, all these these cover objects and stuff like that. You know, we we've got plans in the making for making like you know area zone specific. Oh yeah, let's try. To Wait, and in primary or? Oh yeah, yeah, dash bash. Oh, nice. That's cool. I haven't seen that one yet. I like the kick, man. This guys are hackers, man. They like get calls the scan lines and stuff to increase and do a lot of jamming stuff to your optical system so you don't your HUD elements disappear and everything is really really annoying, but it makes sense for the hackers to do that. But that's what we're going to work on, I think a lot going forward too is making like kind of more specific environments, a little bit more custom catered cuz like right now we we've, we've got these little procedurally generated zones and um they're really neat and stuff like that, but I, I think that we can continue the the trend of the procedural generation, like within the framework of a certain type of area. Like we've talked about having like a warehouse, you know, that has different shelves and stuff like that that are procedurally generated. Um, but uh, so you can actually abandon the mission too, um, or or like a you know some kind of fuel fueling station or something like that that has different. You know, explodable cover objects, you know, so, yeah, <laughs> the fountain is the hacker, yeah, but, see, there's, it's, um, there's different factions, too, so, like, the, the fat guy hacker is for the, uh, the faction called the Rude Boys, and they're, like, um, you know, more of a rough and kind of like a Mad Maxi type of, uh, uh, faction, I think, borderland style dudes you know that are just more rough and you know melee type of dude and he's the he's the hacker for them so he's like the basic level one hacker guy but uh yeah we're we're, we're putting in civilians we've already got the module in place that there can be friendlies that are hurt and the way that we are simulating that right now is once the once a, a um, once an opponent is like subdued and they drop down and they put their hands behind their head like this then um, you can still shoot them you can tell them to get on the ground and then they drop their head all the way down so that definitely sets up um, the whole stage for making you know friendly civilians that get in your way and it'll it'll be a really awesome thing like a bank robbery or something like that will be really great where there's just a ton of civilians in your way and you've got to really go out and target you know just like one specific dude or something like that so it, it's gonna be a lot of fun moving forward but this is this is a really nice kernel of an idea I think that it's something really cool and I wish that I can show you now the, some of the buying stuff time goes forward here so I got 95 requisition points uh, that's a good question <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what I do. So <laughs> I just go straight for but but as far as making in game ramifications, we've talked about making mini law HQ like a place where you can actually get around and get out and walk around. And so there would be a really cool opportunity to keep track of some kind of 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 a, you know, stat that kinda of indicates how ruthless you are or how, you know, crooked you are or whatever based on 
you know, whatever. So uh, it, it, there's definitely options. Um, yeah, you could make a beat with the repair zone. Probably is. Yeah, impossible, dude. I don't think you can kill any, can make it through without killing anybody. Cause I mean, there's always gonna be somebody that gets in the way too. So. Well, I think you guys have seen it now. I mean, it's 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 definitely you know there's work to be done, but you know the main core of it is here. I mean, and we we could we could really clean this up and, and have a very viable product. I think for too long. So, oh man, Jeff, I love that new that new dash kick. Man, is just awesome, dude. That's I've all, that's what I always wanted in this game. Yeah, so now he's he's giving up. So I want to try and get him on the ground. So now he's crouched. So I kind of like that the run is a little bit slower because it encourages me to use the dash more now. So but I'm not used to it yet, so I need to take some time to get to know it. As you can see, I'm not the best person to illustrate how to play the game. I just wanted to illustrate the game itself. So, very cool game though. I mean, going to be one that we're going to be talking about a little bit more, and I'm going to add some entries to the dev blog, I think, on the website. and um, You know, we'll have we'll have some more information about it coming down you know as it gets closer to time and we'll try to keep track of a little update blog on that get people excited I think um, but I think it's about time I rounded it out for the evening went about an hour longer than I wanted to so I mean I really appreciate everybody stopping in and checking us out you know I, I won't hound you again to follow us but by all means um, feel free to you know, hit me up sometime. I got some of you guys Skype information. I'm on Reddit. Um, I, we're we're doing this every Monday night. Um, you can find us on on Twitter, Facebook, and just feel free to hit me up sometime. I mean, I'm always down to talk to folks about the about the game and stuff. So get ideas from people and kind of share the feedback. Yeah, absolutely. So. Thanks again, guys, and uh, y'all have a good one.